Well, it was just five months ago that Gino Oriema cut down the nets. His 10th, 10th national championship with the UConn women's basketball program. And Gino threw out the first pitch here at City Field tonight. He's standing by with Steve Gelbs. His report tonight is brought to you by StubHub. Steve? Gary, he threw out the first pitch, and he threw a perfect strike, by the way. And I know you've been in some high leverage situations before. Where did that one rank up, and how much practice did you have going into it? Uh, buddy of mine, uh, we threw a little bit the other day. Uh, a little bit today before, before we came out for about five minutes, but... Uh, it's not like I had to throw a bunch of them, you know, it's, it's just one and then then we're done. So it was good. Freddie Galvis with the double to lead off the inning for the Phillies. Um, a lot of people probably don't know this about you. I mean, they know that you grew up in Philadelphia, but you grew up a diehard Phillies fan. So was it tough to put that Mets jersey on before the game? Uh, you know, not 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 tough in the sense that, uh, you know, it's not the same Phillies that I grew up with, obviously. And, uh, Lots changed. I, I, I still follow them, but uh, they nice enough to give me the jersey. So I took number 20. Mike Schmidt was my favorite player growing up. So uh, it all worked out. It's a beautiful uniform. I got to tell you, it's it's it's, it's really uh, it's really nice that they would do that. Gino, 35 years as Haran gets the sack bunt down and Dallas moves over to third. But 35 years since the Phillies won their championship in 1980. We were speaking a little bit about that before. What do you remember about those teams around that time and that team in particular growing up? Well, you know, uh, we had some, you know, growing up, we had some of the worst teams in, in, in the history of baseball, I think. And then all of a sudden we got, you know, we got to be pretty good. And. But unfortunately, the Reds were great. The big red machine was great. The Dodgers were unbelievable. So we just could never get over that hurdle, you know. And then all of a sudden, you know, we get Pete Rose. And that was kind of the, you know, the, the, the impetus that we needed. And we already had, like, some great, great, great players. You know, Mike Schmidt, Greg Luzinski, and, you know, Larry Boa, who's coaching. And, uh, you know, just... A, a, a lot of unbelievable players, but 1980, I think the people in Philadelphia felt vindicated for what happened in 1964 when we thought we were going to win the, the pennant and we didn't. But um, it, Philadelphia is a baseball town, uh, but right now they're falling on hard times. But when I was a kid, I'll tell you what, they're, uh, every kid in the entire Philadelphia area was glued to the TV. Darnell Sweeney's base hit right there puts the Phillies up one to nothing. You know, you've spoken often, Gino, about how you draw your coaching techniques from watching other sports as well and, and what you gather from other coaches, different sports. So who are the guys that you watch that you kind of try and draw from? And are there anybody, or is there anybody, I should say, in baseball that you take something out of? I, I think baseball is... Uh, a much more individual game. I mean, I know it's a team game, but, you know, baseball is a, a stats game. You know, how many home runs did you hit? What's your batting average? How many RBIs do you have? You know, th th whereas I think basketball and, 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 and football are more championships. Like, you're, you're measured by championships. So, in, in baseball, it's, it's a lot more difficult. You know, I, I think baseball, there's so much time between what's happening. Um, but for, for me, I, I love watching guys play who always seem to, like I remember watching Derek Jeter play, right? And Pete Rose was the same way. They knew where the ball was going to be before it got there. They were always in the right place at the right time. They always knew where to hit the ball. They always knew where to throw it next. They, they just seemed to have a, a, another sense. And, and you learn a lot from watching players like that. Gino, let's uh, let's talk about your team, your upcoming team this year. Three-time defending national champions. I know that you have three girls on the team that have a rare opportunity right now to become the first Huskies ever to win four national titles. And for for a coach like you who's accomplished so much, is that something that you look at it as as kind of another level? Is that something that you really want for these girls? And and aside from that, just what can we expect? I know you've got a great freshman class coming in as well. Well. 
you don't get a chance to win four national championships in a row when when you're when you're a college player. You know, on the men's side, you're never there four years if you win the first two. If you win the first one, you might be gone. So some of our players, you know, Brianna Stewart, Mariah Jefferson, Morgan Tuck, they're in a position to be able to do something that no college player has ever done, and that's win four national championships, much less four in a you know, they won four in a row. I mean, maybe a fifth-year player can, you know, skip one or whatever. But this year, they're all back. There's not going to be any complacency simply because we do have a piece of history that I think we're chasing. Um, and the pressure is always there. Everybody's out to beat us. Everybody knows that. Uh, but that's why you coach at Connecticut. That's why you come to Connecticut. Uh, you know, and I was talking to our baseball coach the other day about how to be really good when, whoa, when everybody wants you to be good. Uh, Jeff Frank, we're looking pretty good right there as he singles home another run. So it's 2 nothing Phillies here with two outs. Just to finish what you were saying, though, Gino. You know, Jeff Francourt came up to me when I was down on the field, and he went to the rival high school of Maya Moore. And, uh, and we were talking a lot about, about Maya. He's a, he's a great basketball fan. Uh, but, you know, we got two guys playing for, in a Mets system. You know, Vinny Siena from UConn, who made the all-star team this year. Uh, LJ Mazzilli. So at UConn, you know, I think we've become the kind of school where championships and, 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 and being great is kind of the ex expectation now. So for, for the players that we have, there's no, like, oh, my God, can we do this? It's, it's, uh, it's something that they expect to do. Right. And I'm going to enjoy it. This is going to be one of the most fun years that I've ever had coaching at Connecticut simply because we have an opportunity to do something that's never been done before. Well, Gino, enjoy the rest of the game here. It's been fun catching up for a little while. Good luck on the upcoming season and with first and third, two outs, two across. Let's send it back up to the booth, guys. All right, uh, Gino Oriyama, who has enjoyed uh, success unprecedented at, uh, in his sport. Ten national championships, including the last three. That's uh, uh, pretty amazing. Fathomable in this day and age. It's wooden esque. Five perfect seasons. Mm -hmm. I don't care what league you're in, that's not easy.